Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a Finnish, war, romantic film called, The Midwife. Spoilers incoming. The Lapland Front, located in Finland's northernmost region, Lapland, has been under the control of the Nazis since 1941. Three years later, in the autumn of 1944, Finland signed an armistice with the Soviet Union, provided that it broke diplomatic ties with Germany and flushed out any German soldiers remaining in Finland after September 15, 1944. However, the operation extended beyond late October, as 200,000 German troops remained in the Finnish territory. It is September 26, 1944, as World War II rages in Finland. In the village of Ifjord, Norway, a young Finnish woman, Helena Latilo, is held captive with some Finnish men on a boat traversing the icy Arctic Ocean with Nazi soldiers. She declares herself a midwife, and in her head, she recites the letter she wrote for a German-Finnish SS officer, Johannes Angelhurst, whom she loved. She promises to love him forever and wait for him, even if she will die waiting in the dead man's cabin. Upon reaching land, the soldiers unbind her and give her a pistol to shoot the prisoners who came along with her as a prize for the trip. She points to the poor men with it but cannot bring herself to do the task, so she throws it on the ground. The soldiers then line her up with the rest and prepare to shoot them in the back. To her surprise, only the male prisoners are gunned down, and she is ordered to walk back to the frigid ocean onto the ice. She asks Johannes to forgive her as she faces her fate alone. Some months earlier, in June 1944, Helena, known to the villagers as Wild Eye, performs a successful delivery as a midwife, despite the birth mother's death in the middle of labor. After filling out a report card, she goes to the window and talks to her female superior, who instructs her to go to a town called Nikala, even though she will feel unwelcome there due to her disdain for abortion. She hastily leaves on a bike and travels on a rocky path, where she comes across a troop of German soldiers stuck on the road. Stepbrother Yanni, who is on a delivery truck, asks for her help to push the vehicle out of the mud along with the soldiers. As she does this, she takes a glimpse of a handsome German officer, Johannes, who looks worried about their situation. Afterward, she arrives at another pregnant mother, Lissu's residence, to deliver a dark-colored infant. Yanni remarks that he has seen a few black people around the area visibly discriminating on their race. Later, she converses with head midwife on about what to do with the mother and child, who will be executed if the Nazis discover the infant's skin color. The older woman then decides to tear up the birth certificate Helena is writing. Eventually, the SS officers visit the tavern to document their operation with photographs. Just then, Johannes and Helena's eyes meet, with the latter feeling slightly smitten by the young officer who had seen him twice in one day. As the midwives prepare for the photo opportunity, Yanni whispers to Helena that she will be interviewed by Johannes soon enough for a German magazine piece since she is very good at her job. After all, the young officer is tasked with watching the villagers and reporting any resistance activities taking place around him. By nightfall, On and Yanni walk off to a distant field carrying the baby. As Helena reads a book, she sees a witch doctor accompanying the pair as he prepares to drown the baby in the bog. The young woman tears up, seeing the horrific act before her eyes. As soon as the distraught midwives leave the area, Helena rushes toward where they left the infant to find it and give it a proper burial. While she sits among the reeds, she laments her situation, praying to God that he will provide Johannes to her as a husband so she can leave her profession. As morning dawns over the village, the midwives gather among the German troops as the young filmmaker Johannes takes videos of the scene. On suggests that Helena make a move on him before his group leaves for another camp the next day. She contemplates this later during lunch and asks Yanni to help her get work into Tavka to get closer to Johannes. He and On are initially teasing her, knowing it is foolish to set foot in the war-torn zone, recalling that Helena's father died there. The young woman protests, but Yanni stubbornly leaves the table and goes down to the basement to check the furnace. She follows him and reveals she knows about the baby's death at their hand last night. He denies this, saying an eagle swooped down and killed it, but she insists on taking him to the burial site as proof. Feeling defeated, he decides to give in to her request and arrange a work permit in the Tatavka Nazi prison camp. The next day, Yanni drives Helena to the campsite, where she sees several officers on patrol and killing prisoners of war. They enter without any issue and unload all of Helena's belongings. She immediately walks up to a superior, Nazi SS officer Gödel, to get instructions as she starts assuming her duties as a medical assistant in the camp. After lunch, he takes her and Yanni to his office and offers them a drink as his trusted manservant, Alexei, plays the violin. Helena comments about the conditions in the camp, believing this is more livable than others she worked in. 
Girdle informs her that she will be working on more menial tasks while another nurse, Hadia, runs the sickbay alone. Johannes appears and is ordered to take a photo of them on the spot. Later, memories of the prisoners flooding the concentration camp run through the young officer's mind as he sits alone by the riverside, feeling guilty over his involvement. Simultaneously, Helena is carrying fresh clothes to headquarters when a bomb is shot from a distance and explodes on the site, killing the soldiers. Just then, some fighter planes fly above the camp and rain down heavy fire as the young medical assistant calmly walks away toward the bombing shelter. Inside, she, Johannes, and the officers await the end of the bombing raid feeling terrified. Seeing him visibly shaken, she holds his hand, assuring him that she can cure his nerves. After clearing the area, she assumes her duties once more when she catches Alexei trying to take painkiller medication without her permission. He confesses that his life is in danger once he is sent to the cowsheds and requests Helena to leave the door open so that he can escape. She thinks about it as she tends to an injured soldier whose leg needs to be amputated. Later while cleaning clothes, Hadia arrives to instruct her to record the number of dead bodies in the cowsheed. As Helena curiously asks about what they do there, the head nurse implies torture. Afterward, Johannes visits her for a bath to clean and calm himself. Feeling vulnerable, he confides about his recurring nightmares of the war effort, hearing women's laughter on the battlefield, which Helena reveals is a tactic the Soviet Union uses to confuse the Germans. While massaging his back, she hears a commotion happening outside what appears to be a Finnish woman being eyed lustfully by the soldiers. As the woman brandishes a shiv, Helena pleads with Officer Girdle to spare her life and make her a helper. Despite this, the young lady is brought with other female captives straight into the cowshed to be stripped naked, shaved, and cleaned against the fence. Though Hadia willingly follows orders and joins in on the Germans' revelry, Helena notices that she is deeply hurt inside seeing her fellow women tortured. Hours later, well into the night, she sees Alexei sneak under the barbed fence and escape without drawing any unwanted attention. The next morning, an alarm goes off as Yanni is ordered to drive the convoy of soldiers that will hunt down Alexei. Helena begs to come along and ensure the young boy will not be killed, but her stepbrother refuses. She then gets Johannes' permission to ride along, as the young officer is enthused by her presence. Along the way, their truck pulls over because of a blockade where the soldiers use metal detectors to fish out hidden landmines on the road. Suddenly, another set of Russian bombers swoops to fire at the German troops, prompting Yanni, Johannes, and Helena to run for cover. The terrified young woman clings to his arms as he tries to lead her through the bog to evade the ongoing assault. After the group camp out in the woods, they journey across the mountainside and end up at Dead Man's cabin. Yanni hesitates to go inside, knowing that death awaited the prisoners who settled there. He runs away, leaving Johannes and Helena to fend for themselves, though the latter believes he will call for help eventually. The pair take the opportunity to wind down and use the amenities provided by the cabin to rest and cook food. The following day, Helena gathers water from the stream while Johannes fixes his camera lens. Inside the house, she requests a photo and wants to be intimate with him. He initially hesitates but is coerced by her when she moves his hand to her private area. Their true feelings are exposed as they make love passionately. The intensity of their physical intimacy makes Helena screams in ecstasy. The following morning, the pair seem to grow more fond of each other, though Johannes still doubts their relationship. Helena hopes they will marry each other, even if he does not want to return to his duty as a soldier. She makes a pact with him that they will meet up in Dead Man's cabin if they ever separate. After some days pass, Johannes decides to contact the camp via radio to report their survival. As he leaves, she takes a peek inside his photo box, horrified to discover pictures of dead bodies in various areas. Johannes returns astonished to find her burning the photographs, but she reasons that it is better not to remember his experiences during the war. Afterward, he jumps in the river and starts thinking about years-long memories of filming the deaths of Ukrainian Jews at the Babi Yar massacre site in Kiev. He awakens the next day filled with regret, having done such cruel things under the orders of his Nazi superiors. After Helena comforts him, Yanni returns with an injured Alexei, whom he discovers hiding in a potato cellar. Just as Johannes decides to shoot him to not jeopardize their situation, an alcoholic hunter, Bjorn, snipes the young boy dead and fires warning shots at the pair, forcing them to flee. Later at night, the two lovers return to Tatovka as Girdle, and the SS burn the prisoners' clothes. The superior assigns Helena to handle the cowsheet operations now that Hadia is dead. Later in his office, he interrogates her about her whereabouts while they are in the middle of the manhunt. He also shows interest in her as he touches her inappropriately. 
Knowing she is affectionate to Johannes, he reveals that the young officer was tasked with killing thousands of Jews. She is highly appalled by this and leaves while blaming the SS for blindly following orders and deciding who lives and dies. Though Helena's first day assisting in the cowsheets was a success in the eyes of Gödel, she reveals her disgust to Johannes, deeming the operation inhumane and degrading towards women. They later talk about each other's family life before the war and proceed to make love in his room, where she says, I love you. Sometime after another busy day taking photographs for the SS, he secretly meets with Helena to ask her to leave the camp for good, though she must wait for him to return in two days. While he is away, Helena visits the dig site where many dead Jews are buried. Yanni fears for her life, so he hands her a firearm for protection just in case the SS turn on her one day. A day later, she confides in on her guilt in participating in the horrible experiments of the Nazis, revealing they preserve the unborn babies for tests and induce various diseases in the captive women. During one of her shifts, she meets a Finnish prisoner, Heda Neps, whom Yanni has been searching a long time for, and promises to rescue her from the upcoming operation. Though Gödel gives her permission to exclude the female prisoner, he threatens to punish her for lying about working in other Nazi camps. Sometime later, a radio broadcast announces that the armistice agreement between the Soviet Union and the United Kingdom has been signed. In light of this distressing news, Gödel urges the SS to incarcerate all the Russians they captured, burn all the hospital records, and bring out all the women from the cowsheets. Helena hurriedly hides Heda in the supplies room for Yanni to find her later. That night, the SS purged the camp, killing hundreds of prisoners. In the middle of the chaos, Helena sneaks inside Gödel's office to look for her records but fails to find anything. Later, Gödel demands the key to her safe so that he can destroy the evidence, but she refuses. As he leaves to dismantle the entire safe, she screams, declaring she wants out and will no longer do any more sinister deeds for the Nazis. He brings her into his office, seemingly accepting her resignation before forcefully kissing her goodbye, as he plans to kill her. Simultaneously, Tatovka prison camp operations end with the execution of the rest of the prisoners of war. Helena packs up her things and tells Heda she will return for her in the morning. The next day, Helena is brought in front of the troops to face a brutal punishment for helping Heda escape. Like every captive woman, she is shaved, stripped, and injected with cholera. Despite her hardship, she tells Gödel that Johannes will save her, though he believes the Russians have already captured him. Luckily, as the night falls, Heta leaves the closet and rescues Helena so they can escape together. As the young midwife races to the steel door, Gödel fires a warning shot but intends to help her, only for Heta to shoot him in the neck. Helena refuses to kill the man and leaves him bleeding to death alone. Outside, she kills a truck driver, allowing the two women to hide inside the body bags that will be transported to Parkina Harbor. They arrive sometime in September and live in one of the refugee shelters. In the middle of the night, Yanni visits her and tearfully reunites with Heda. He then arranges a way out for Helena on a boat that will travel to Narvik and lead her to the dead man's cabin. Jumping a few weeks later, the young midwife navigates through the icy land area and eventually reaches the cabin, hoping Johannes will also show up. A few days pass as Yanni makes it to the place to check in on her. At night, they meet with other Finnish refugees and gather supplies for a trip to Sweden while also preparing Johannes's passport and Finnish birth certificate should he return. The next day, Helena bids her stepbrother a tearful goodbye as they must live separate lives. Later in the afternoon, the hunter Bjorn appears in the living room. He reveals that the Allies have paid him to kill Nazi invaders in the Lapland. As he leaves her supplies, he warns her that they will soon come for her and destroy the cabin. As weeks turn into months, Helena continues waiting, not knowing that Johannes was held prisoner by the Russians. One night, he finds an opportunity to escape, killing the guard and disguising himself with his clothes. After shooting another soldier, he hastily runs away from the prison camp even though a search party goes looking for him the next day. He finally arrives at the cabin, only to find it burned down and raided by the Russians. Inside, he discovers a letter Helena left for him. Though initially saddened, he hears a noise inside a hidden compartment and rejoices when he sees her hiding all along, having never quit the fight despite the danger. The pair embrace, feeling relieved that they are free. The following morning, the two lovers cross the river on foot, where Helena declares her happiness being with Johannes after escaping the cabin on November 19, 1944. They eventually married in Sweden and settled in Turtula, Finland, to start a family. By April 27, 1945, the Lapland War ended with the withdrawal of the German troops who remained in the Northwest Territories. Sadly, 
most women who went along with the soldiers were abandoned in Norway, with only a few reaching Germany safely. Furthermore, the newly established Finnish order did not validate the 700 recorded births of infants from German-Finnish mixed relationships. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.